the rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hi everyone, you're watching uh, the Wrestle Rock Podcast uh, Season 5. I'm Johnny D, and I host this episode with my partner Benoit, aka Nostradamus Ben. How's it going today, my friend? Uh, Fine, and nice to see you again. Yes, it's always a pleasure doing this uh, five, Season 5 with you. And we have none other than uh, Ryan Spencer Cook. He is the Rock City uh, Machine Co. Uh, member. He is yep. always involved with the uh, Ace Freely project. Oh, and yep. also um, a guitar player for uh, the Gene Simmons band. Oh. Give it up for Ryan Spencer. How's he going today, my friend? Uh, hey, guys. How are you? Yes, Fine. we're going Thanks. super great. We know that you traveling. Yeah so much and uh sometimes it's difficult to reach you so we are very grateful that you can accept this invitation yeah and honestly this is awesome awesome yes. thank you guys i uh, i appreciate the invitation and i'm happy that we were able to get our schedules worked out so we could do this together so thank you for doing this no problem no problem no problem yeah. so uh the first question was uh very simple so yeah, uh, go ahead my friend Okay, uh, Mr. Spencer Cook, uh, who was your favorite mu musician or band when you were young? Oh, Kiss, definitely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It is definitely Kiss, when I, ever since I was a young kid. Nice, nice. Yeah. And uh, we know that you uh, currently release uh, a single album and yeah. uh, a full album with uh ace band of course uh yeah. the question is really simple so why did you choose to release uh the single cherry medicine and the the the, the following day um with uh the 10,000 volts under the ace freely name right well i'll tell you what honestly that that's ace's band so ace's new record is called 10,000 volts and uh, Ace is doing a lot of press for that right now. Who go, Who knows? You guys may talk to him as well. Yeah. Uh, Ace is doing a lot of press. We're doing a lot of touring. Uh, we've done two videos. Yeah. And then did one video by himself. But to be honest with you, as much as I'd like to take credit for, you know, as to why what song is picked or oh, man. I really have nothing to do with it. Uh, it's Ace's band and he okay. and I were able to decide that. And they, I'm pretty certain I can answer on his behalf. They chose to release the song 10,000 Volts first. Okay. That's the title track, and that's the name of the album. So okay. they wanted to do that one. And then there was another video that we did with AC you mentioned called Cherry Medicine. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to just put, you know, uh, keep as many eyes and ears on the record as they can. So they just felt like that was the next single. And who were we to say no? So we just showed up and did the video. It was great. And the music is awesome. And Thank the you. image, I can't believe it. Uh, you must to see it honestly. And if you, uh, for your information, everyone, uh, um, if you want uh, listen uh, these two different album, uh, every album is available on Apple Music, yeah. iTunes Music, Spotify, yeah. Amazon Music, and also at Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, you live in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, did you decide to live there for uh, the city's reputation and to be able to make uh, a living from your passion, my friend? Yeah. 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 The thing was, you know, I lived in Los Angeles as well. Okay. And, uh, you know, it just made sense for, you know, the, the their music towns. The music industry lives in both of these cities, mm -hmm. both the Nashville and Los Angeles. There's music in every city and town, and I am aware of that. I don't, there's, you know, I come from the Midwest. I come from Topeka, okay. Kansas. But that being said, you increase your chances of meeting more people in the industry, more people that do what you want to do, more people with the same mindset that you have about writing, recording, uh, record deals, touring, the whole deal. Uh, it's a hard business, but living in, the cities that are driven by that kind of business, it'll make your, it increases your odds. Let's okay. put it that way. Yeah. So yeah, I did. I, you know, I came to Nashville because it has a reputation for, you know, record labels, uh, touring artists, playing artists, uh, musicians, mm -hmm. publishers, everything. It's all here. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, you are uh, one of the important players in the Ace Frehley band. How yeah. did you come to play with Ace Frehley? Well, the way that started is uh, with Gene Simmons. Okay. We, we were we were in Gene Simmons' uh, solo band. Okay. And, you know, we did that for a couple of years, which was a lot of fun. You know, we love Gene. And towards the end of our two-year run with Gene Simmons, we played in Australia. Okay. And oh, oh, it was wow. a clean act. And Ace asked us if we would be his band as well as Gene's band on that Australian tour. And that's how the whole thing started. And then coincidentally, Gene was getting ready to go back to, Kit, uh, go back to Kiss for the farewell tour at the end of that. Yeah, yeah. And he said to Ace, you know, I have to go back to Kiss for a while. These guys would be great as your band. And that was back in 2019. And here we are five years later still with Ace. So it worked out pretty well. That's awesome because uh, I remember uh, we are live in Quebec City. And, yeah. and a couple of years ago, you and the guy was in a uh, big festival in um, Canada Fest. uh, St. Joseph de Beauce. It was I remember you were there with the boys, and that was uh, the, the uh, Gene Simmons' birthday uh, during the event, and uh, that was awesome because the uh, the down. promoters organized a kind of big birthday with a, a cake and stuff like that. And I remember this event for uh, all my entire life. So yeah. that was awesome. Well, awesome. Well, so That's well, the first time I met you because uh, well, I was in front of, uh, of the band and it's got, God damn, this guy looks great. He is so <laughs> talented. Thank and you. He has a uh, presence on stage and uh, that that's awesome. So, Thank you so uh, much. I, I appreciate that. I want to tell you real quick, that festival, yeah. I remember it, it was called Canafest. Canafest, yeah. And what happened, what I just told you about a minute ago of us playing in, in uh, Australia with okay. ACG, we flew from Quebec City to uh, to Australia. Really? Oh, are you kidding? Meet, wow. To meet Ace and begin that tour in Australia. So wow. you saw us the next day. And when we discussed uh, earlier that you travel, you're traveling all around the world, that's <laughs> that's uh, one of example, you know? Yeah. And uh, about uh, your relationship with Ace, and uh jeans of course yeah uh, we know that uh, currently um uh, both of them work all together for a couple of album but during yeah. your career uh, the fact that you work for uh, ace and uh gene Yeah. Uh, did you uh, have you had any problem with your career because uh, the the the, the um, uh, about the, the the friction between uh, both of them? No, I'll tell you what. No? Okay, when we, when we were together, uh, okay. especially touring, and I was touring with Ace and Gene at the same time, they got along famously. Okay. okay. Now, the stuff that goes on in the press back and forth. Mm -hmm. That's between them, and they have always been kind enough to leave us out of it, okay. and and that's the way I want to because I love and support both of those guys. Yeah, exactly. They've never put me in a position to choose one or the other, which okay. I'm for. And honestly, I feel like it's personal. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I honestly wish that everybody would keep keep to themselves, and mm -hmm. since it doesn't involve me. It's none of my business. So, honestly, I, I know that might be, not be a that, that's a safe answer, but I really want what's best for the both of them, and they've both treated me like gold. And that makes sense because if yeah. you are a professional and if you do your own thing, so it is what it is. So yeah. the story yeah. is on a path. So that that's that's yeah. not your problem it's if you know what. Not my business. So exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay, uh, Ryan. Uh, Can you name a music star you've never played with but would love to? Oh yeah. <laughs> Boy, there's a there's a pretty good list. That's a pretty good list. Uh who would I love to play with? Man, 
I, I, I think I think Dave Grohl would be a lot of fun. Uh, oh, uh, probably, man. I think well, Dave Grohl would be a lot of fun. Really good choice. Uh, we I've I've had the 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 pleasure and opportunity to share a bill with several people, but not play with several. You know what I mean? Like we'll open yeah. for some, will open for us. I mean, there's such a such a list. Uh, you know, there's so many great singers. I'd love to play with Joe Perry. Wow. I'd love to play with Brad Whitford or Steven Tyler, any of the Aerosmith guys. <laughs> you know, uh, who who wouldn't want to sit down and play with, you know, Michael Anthony and Alex Van Halen, or something like that. You know, you know what I mean. Just I, I'm as much a fan. I'm more of a fan than anything. So there, there, there's such a long list, and the list probably changes every day. <laughs> <laughs> and that totally makes sense because yeah, uh, you are a, a rock player and all your answer makes sense so you. um you know that you are in relation with uh gene bazon so yeah. are, are you a wrestling fan since you are dating the beautiful g <laughs> <laughs> i should be shouldn't i i'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you i didn't <laughs> even know that glow existed until i met her okay <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, I had never seen the television show. Okay. Uh, I I never never heard of her when we met, and then you know it just it's just all of a sudden I got shown this whole new world of that I didn't know anything about. It's a lot of fun. Nice. It's a lot of fun, but yeah, I didn't. I was embarrassed when I didn't know about Glow. <laughs> <laughs> had no idea. Okay, uh, you've played one. Uh, uh, sorry, you've played on a number of albums, including Skid Row, the, yeah. the Gangs, All Here, yeah. Ascend to Great Heights uh, with Alice Cooper and Ace Frehley, and yeah. recently Ten Thousand Volts uh, with Ace again. What's your best recording memory? Oh, geez, there's so many. Well, let's start. You mentioned Skid Row, for example, right? Okay, Skid Row. Yeah, those, those are my dearest friends. Mm -hmm. And all I did on that new record was sing background vocals, right? Yeah. On a lot of the songs, a lot of the songs. And it was recorded right here in Nashville. Rachel lived right down the street. The producer, Nick, lives right down the street. We're all neighbors. Okay, so okay, okay. It was real easy for them to call and to say, hey, we need you to come sing this song today or come sing this song today. But the thing that makes it so fun is we're best buddies. So every time I got to do it, that was a lot of fun. And then you skip the ace. Like playing on Ace's record when we redid She on, uh, what was it called? Origins, Volume 2. You I, know, I told you that growing up, Kiss was my favorite band when I was a kid. You know, getting to play on a record with one of the guys, original guys from Kiss, that was a whole memory in itself just because of course. You know, I always hoped that I would just open for Kiss. I never had any idea that I'd be playing on a record with one. Yeah, you know? and mostly when you were a Kiss fan. So yeah. that's... Yeah. So that, that just happened awesome. by, you know, just all the work over the years. Like I said, it was a big surprise because I, I always kind of thought I'd end up on tour with one of them like as an opening act or something, but I never thought I'd be in a band with one of them. So that's just a great memory, great opportunity. You created a um, the Rock City Machine Co. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us how the, the, the RCMC projects came from? Yeah. Well, the, that band is me and Jeremy and Philip, okay. and the three of us three of us are in Gene's band, and we were yeah. in Gene's band, and we're in Ace's band, mm -hmm. and we're always together. So even when we aren't we weren't touring with either of those two guys, we were doing shows ourselves around Nashville and in different cities, and then it finally just came to the idea like, well, why shouldn't we do a, a record? So we produced we uh, recorded it with producer Marty Fredrickson, who's produced. Aerosmith and Ozzy and Motley and the Stroke, the Struts and all these people, mm -hmm. and she's here in Nashville. So it just seemed like a logical step to to make a record, you know. And it's fun making records with your friends, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Okay. For our pre pre closing segment, uh, we'll give you a name and in few words, uh, tell us something about them. Okay. The first one is Alice Cooper. Oh, the king of shock rock. Of course, yeah. The shock rock, uh, great, great songwriter, great songwriter performer. David Bowie. David, oh boy, just 
just he's he was so iconic you know and the thing that i loved about him he was um he was even though he was a rock artist it was he changed himself yeah you know? of course it, it was like he, he would change his sound and his image but it all still sounded like bowie and it all fit together so he's just a master of just you know combining different styles of music but never losing who he was in the whole process so i love that he is a creative genius of course yeah he is. Uh, the uh, second, uh, the, the the third one is, uh, is Nikki Six. Nikki Six. Oh man, just rock star, fucking rock star. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, again, another one. I mean, it's no secret. He is the songwriting, the songwriter force behind Motley Crue, and you know they all contributed big parts. But you know, man, that's just his songwriting is amazing. Great songwriter. And Jeremy Arsbrook. Garth Brooks? Jeremy Arsbrook. Oh, I thought you said Garth Brooks. <laughs> no, not Garth Brooks. No, no, no. Not Garth Brooks. <laughs> I love Garth Brooks. Oh, uh, <laughs> Jeremy Arsbrook, uh, dear friend. Yeah. Dear friend, great guitar player, uh, best buddy. Yeah. And the last one, uh, Garth Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guy. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> And the last one, Ryan Spencer Cook. Oh, jeez. Just a lucky guy. Lucky, fortunate guy who, who loves his job. But don't forget, my friend, hard work pays off. So yeah. you deserve hey, it. I agree. I don't know if I deserve it, but I have worked hard. So thank you for that. I appreciate it <laughs> very much. Thank you. And we are on our uh, closing segment. So, okay. uh, first of all, thank you so much for the interview. Thank that you. was uh, an honor uh, to Likewise. have um, uh, practically a 20 minutes, a generous time of, uh, of your oh. time. It's very appreciated. I'm so, as you. usual, my partner, Benoit, a.k.a. Uh, Nostradamus Ben, it's all about the French prophet, and that's why uh, he has his uh, nickname. So... He will try to predict the future of our guests. So okay. let's go. First of, first of all, uh, Ryan, thank you so much for the interview. It was huge, amazing. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I predict to you, uh, you are in a relationship with uh, the lovely Jean Bezaoui. Yes. Okay, maybe in a few months or a few years, you will marry her. Okay. That's my prediction. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see if you're right. <laughs> 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 uh, we put that on the universe. The the only the only the universe knows. Yeah, no, yeah exactly. <laughs> so it. it was. Uh, we are with. Uh, we were with our uh, special guest. I'm talking about um, Ryan Spencer Cook, yep. uh, musician, talented musician for Cube. Gene Simmons, Ace Frehley, uh, Gord Brooks fan. Uh, Gord <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your time that was awesome thank you guys and you know i'm always happy to to talk to two to two fun happy guys so thank you guys thank you so much yeah. have a great one goodbye bye-bye be safe yeah